Hey everyone, welcome back to Kitchen Counter Theology episode 2. We had an amazing response after our first episode, so we're going to keep putting these out as long as y'all keep listening to us. Um, today, this is where you get a recipe and a devotional and a question to ask with whoever gathers around your table in the evening. Uh, last time we made kale salad. Today, we're going to make something a little bit more basic. Um, and it's because, so when I first started cooking, um, the way I cooked was I opened a bunch of jars and I mixed things together and I called it cooking. Uh, and then at some point, at some point I started reading books and I started realizing people didn't used to do that. Uh, people actually used to make things from the raw ingredients. And one of the things that I learned that I really prefer homemade uh, is mayonnaise. Uh, it's super simple, it's super easy. You do not need to buy it in the store unless you really want to because it's two ingredients. It's oil, it's egg, and it's a little bit of seasonings, uh, but it's basically oil and egg. Oil, egg, and magic third ingredient, which is what we're gonna be talking about today, patience. Uh, so I'm using grapeseed oil because I, it's got a light taste and I just prefer it, but you can use whatever kind of oil you want to use. Um, so the first thing you do in making this is we crack our egg and then you are going to separate the white and save it for something. Whites are useful for anything from, um, there's a lot of cosmetic uses for them. You can use them in cocktails, you can use them in lots of things. So save that for whatever you do with your egg whites. Put the yolk into your bowl. And then, you are gonna take, this is not actually necessary, but it helps a whole lot. You're gonna take a little bit of mustard. I'm using Dijon mustard. You're gonna take a whisk. You're gonna start whisking that together just to where it starts. It's all blended in. And here is where the magic starts. Are you ready? Uh, so quick story, when I first did this, I was so used to I was so used to just dumping things all together. I looked at the ingredients and I saw it was egg and oil and I was like, well, that's easy. I took egg and oil, dumped it in a blender, pressed, pressed go. And I was like, that didn't work. And the reason it didn't work is because this happen, has to happen in a very particular way in order to make your glorious mayonnaise. Uh, and what happens is you take your oil and you pour a tiny, 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 tiny bit in and then you whisk and then you pour a tiny, it in and you whisk and a tiny more bit and you keep going like that. You see why the third ingredient is patient. So there will, there will come a point where I can do more of this, but at the beginning it's very important to do a little bit at a time and whisk, 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 whisk because this is what makes that beautiful sauce that's the base of so many other amazing, amazing sauces. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is patience. I know, I know, it's your favorite. Everyone loves the ideas of patience until they actually have to be patient. I, I, I think that's the way it is with most of the virtues. People love the idea until they have to do it. And then they're like, ah, oh, I don't like that anymore. Patience has a lot of definitions. My definition is this. Patience is the ability to stay the course when something takes longer than you think it should. You know, we all have these ideas in our head of what, uh, how long things should take. We all have these ideas in our head of what we're willing to invest time-wise. And uh, most of us are pretty good until it goes past that time limit and then and we're not, um, and it's different, you know, so you're very patient until it has been two days Amazon, get my delivery here. Um, you're very patient until I've been on that diet for two weeks, it should be working by now. But the truth is, um, most things in life that are worthwhile take a lot longer than we instinctively think they should. If you go to a gym and you tell the trainer, I want to build muscle, I wanna be able to do a pull up, I wanna be able to do run five miles, I wanna be able to do X, Y, Z, and the trainer looks at you and says, great, we'll get you there in a week. Mm, they're lying. Because real change, real anything, real substantive anything in this life takes patience. 
it takes waiting and working and doing whatever we're supposed to do longer than we think we should. And the problem is because we're kind of terrible at that as humans, we sometimes go too fast and we break things. And I want to show you what happens when we do this. And this is going to kind of hurt my heart to do it. But say you lose patience and you do that. Lots. So what's happened here, if you can see, there's a separation there. It's hard to see on the, the video screen. But what happened is that beautiful emulsion that we had going, that, that kind of thick, steady emulsion is now separated. And what's separated is in there is the oil is separated from the egg. And however much whisking you do, you're not gonna get that back together. If you pour the oil in too quickly, it breaks. That's what happens. Um, that's what happened to me the first time I tried to make this. Make this. I dumped it all in a blender and plastic grow, and I came up with a gooey, messy glob of oil and egg particles. And that's what happens when we lose patience with something, not just our mayonnaise. Uh, and I will bet you, you have been in a relationship <laughs> where you lost your patience, uh, you pushed too hard, and you ended up breaking something. I had a woman once tell me that she had been praying for her son to get right with God again. He'd grown up Christian, he'd had, you know, fallen away, and she was praying for him to start coming back to church, to have some kind of relationship with God, just for something to wake up in his soul. Um, and I asked her um, how long she'd been praying, and she said, oh, a whole month. And I was like, mm, yeah, this is going to take longer than that. And what happened is instead of just keeping praying, she started pushing. She started calling him every week and asking if he was going to church. And she started, um, you know, texting him on Sunday mornings. And she started pushing. And guess how much good that did? Not. Um, it broke their relationship. No, it's it's fixable. I'm always trying to fix it. But um, it needed fixing after that. So the thing about patience is that patience is not just something that uh, makes the waiting easier. It's not just something that um, keeps us, um, you know, God does because he likes to torture us. Patience keeps us from breaking things because it makes us do things in the time that God has set for them to be done. Patience um, keeps us working at what we are supposed to be doing until the end result comes about, even if that end result takes a lot longer than we personally thought it should. So let me show you how to fix this. So if this happens to you, you've got a broken sauce, you pour it in another bowl, and you keep it there because you're going to need it. Remember, we can fix things. The rule of Jesus and the rule of the kitchen. Most disasters can be fixed. And what you need is you just need to get yourself another egg. And you do the same thing. You save the white. Save the white. Put the yolk in your bowl. And you start over again. So, a little bit of mustard. Whisking. And then you slowly, slowly, slowly start to pour. All right. When the Bible talks about patience, it says that patience is one of the fruits of the Spirit, which means that if God is living in us, if the Holy Spirit is living in us, if we are doing this walk of discipleship, it's one of these things that naturally grows. It's one of these things that it's a muscle that gets stronger in us the longer we use it, the more we exercise it. Um, and the more we are patient, the more God is able to work through us because the more <laughs> we are able to wait on his timing instead of moving ahead and breaking things. And I want you to notice something about this patience. This is not sitting back on your heels and just 
relaxing. It's not just waiting for God to do things. Patience is doing your job. It's fundamentally doing what you are supposed to be doing until the end result comes, even if that end result takes longer than you think it should. Um, the, in the example of going to your personal trainer, patience means you don't stop working out just because you can't get to your goal in a week, right? The example of relationships means patience means you don't stop praying just because you don't see results immediately. So here's the part. Once you get the, the um, sauce pretty firmly established like that, you take your broken sauce and you start to just pour it in little by little, same way you did with the oil. And you end up with a really, really delicious sauce because it's got two yolks in it instead of one. It's going to be creamy and delightful. This is another trick. So your bowl is moving around like mine is. Take a kitchen cloth and kind of just put it around the bowl, hold it steady like that. And then you keep pouring. Little by little. All right, now we're about at the point that it needs a little bit of thinning. So what we do for that is we I use just plain vinegar. You can use lemon juice. You can use uh, apple cider vinegar. You can use you can use pretty much anything to thin it. Um, we put a little bit of thinning in. A little bit of thinning, and then you just keep pouring your oil, and it keeps getting thicker, and thicker, and thicker. My experience as a Christian is that this is a topic that God makes important to us whether we want it to be important or not. So your life goal maybe is not to become a patient person, but there are very few people who enter this road of discipleship without having their patience grown in some ways, uh, because that is it's a fruit of the Spirit, it's part of the way that God's works. And so I do think maybe if you were talking about this um, theme of patience around your dinner table, one question you guys might ask with each other is, what are you waiting for? Uh, and you know, usually when we ask that question, we ask it in the context of, what are we waiting for? You should get up and do something. But that's, um, that's not really what I'm talking about here. I'm saying like, what in your life are you waiting for? What in your life um, are, do you want to see happen that is not currently happening? And then the second question would be, what are you doing? What is your keeping on, keeping on motion? What's your whisking? What's your mixing? Uh, what's your pouring? And then here's a third question. What has changed in you since you started waiting for this? What has changed in you since you started waiting for this? So, so the thing about patience, the way it works biblically, is that when God brings us into the season of, you know, I'm going to need you to actively wait for me, right? I'm going to need you to whisk and pour and wait for me to make this amazing sauce. When God brings us into the season, the person we are on the other side of the season is different than the person we were going in. And we would not have become that person if God had given it to us immediately, right? That, this is how the way God works. If we got Amazon two-day delivery on everything God was giving us, um, it wouldn't be the same because we would not have had the chance of becoming the person we were becoming throughout the process of developing patience and throughout the process of, of actively waiting for God to work. And so one of the questions you can talk about is how, is, how, is, how has patience changed you? How has the act of waiting changed you? Um, who are you becoming? Right? I mean, so when we're done with this, I'm going to have a slightly stronger left arm. I'm gonna have um, a lot more appreciation for what is in those plastic jars on the kitchen counter and on those plastic jars on the grocery store shelf. Okay, so we're gonna keep going like this. You just add oil and then every now and then you thin it out and you just keep going until you have as much as you want. You can pretty much go indefinitely with that. Um, you keep adding oil and thinning until you get what you want. And then I'm going to show you what you can do with this at the very end.
Okay, so we are done. You see how thick this is? Um, this, I'm not gonna show you what you can do with this because this is magic. And it can turn into one million amazing things in your kitchen. So, um, the first thing we're gonna do with it is um, what most of us do with the sauce to begin with, which is make a mayonnaise. I'm putting in a little bit of garlic, because we're going to make a garlic aioli. Um, and it needs a bit of salt. And then we are going to Actually, this needs a little bit of lemon juice. Yeah. And this becomes beautiful mayonnaise for bacon sandwiches. The other thing you can do with the sauce make ranch dressing for our vegetables. So we're going to take our bowl, we're going to put, mm, I'm going to make a lot of ranch dressing, so I'm just going to put the rest of this bowl in here. And then I'm going to mix in sour cream, parsley. This is very finely minced garlic and onion. juice and of course salt and just mix that and now we have a beautiful dipping sauce or a salad dressing or whatever you want to put it on that is lunch so, this now looks different than the egg oil we started with, and it? it took time, and it took patience, and I now have a stronger left arm for it. But, we get a good ranch dressing, and a good mayonnaise, and a good lots of other things we need. This was Kitchen Counter Theology. Thanks for joining us. Blessings on your table, and I'll see you next time. Bye, Julie.